Okie dokie, thank you very much. Um, today I'm going to speak to you about um, Seggy Farm Garbridge. It's a multi-period settlement within the shadow of a multi valley fort. The Guard um, did these excavations between 2019 and 2021, with a bit of time off in 2020, obviously because of COVID. So because the excavations have just finished, we don't have any specialist reports or radio cabin results to give you, but we can put the site into sort of broad categories and it's essentially prehistoric, going from the Mesolithic, Neolithic, Bronze Age into the Iron Age. And we do actually have some medieval remains as well. So Garbage is about three miles northwest of St Andrews and is the fields we were doing were just to the west of the village and it actually overlooks the Eden Estuary and you can see by the top photo that's the view from the site over the Eden Estuary. The picture at the bottom is actually from Canmore website and it actually shows, shows the multi remains of a hill fort and it's actually four ditches and you can see the outer one just stops. Now that was actually in one of the fields in the north east corner so in 2017 we did an evaluation there and obviously we targeted the both fields were part of the development. There was a smaller north field and there was a larger southern field and it was in the southern field in the northeast corner where the fort was. Now the actual topography of the area is quite, um, the slopes from the fort in the northeast, it slopes very gently downwards with a really steep slope towards the east where the water is. So that's just a view on the top photo of pre-excavation and the one at the bottom is one of the ditches that we uncovered during the evaluation. Now also during the evaluation we found quite a few other areas of archaeology and they are marked the red trenches in the um, evaluation location plan you see there. So in 2019 we went back to actually do the excavation and to open up the areas of archaeology and basically it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and you can see by the survey plan there all the archaeology that we actually found. Now up in the northeast corner you can see the fort and most of that was actually preserved in situ and we only really had a wee bit of it at the side and that was actually just the ditches. But what you can see is in the middle of the site there's a massive band northwest, northwest southeast and that's kind of where the main bulk of the archaeology was and it was mainly, oh we had lots of pits, lots and lots of pits and we had 19 enclosures we had stone features, we had timber post features, we had really, to be honest with you, just about everything, I think. But also on this map, just to point something out, it's also in the central area, you can see a wee bit, it's been marked in grey. And when we were stripping, the, the overburden deposits were very, very deep. They could be about a metre that we had to take off to actually get to the subsoil and the archaeology. But in that middle area, it was particularly deep and there was lots of silts and sort of PT deposits at the base and we think that's maybe been like, we were calling it the pond we think it's obviously been really, really quite a wet area and you can see that the settlement has actually respected it it's actually obviously been wet for a long, long time so it's not the best survey um, drawing that I'm showing you but what you can see is the kind of the green and yellow are all the pits the ones that are in red are the curvilinear enclosures and, um, and the, the brown you probably don't see are actually um, the stone features and you can also see the remains of the fort ditches at the top. Now when we were actually doing the work, we did also have the other top fields which we kind of dismissed quite quickly. It was mainly kind of modern field drains in them and it, our main focus was basically on the large field. So I'm going to talk about pits first mainly because there was quite frankly hundreds of them. And they're very, very common in prehistoric sites and they're often the only evidence of activity. But ours ranged from Neolithic, Bronze Age and into the Iron Age. We got find some old periods in them and we got them in groups. We had about 13 groups of pits that ranged from 8 to 13, 14 pits of all sizes. We got some linear alignments. And the photo at the top on the right, that's one of the linear alignments. And that actually had two pits that were lined with stones and one of them had kind of rough capping stones on top. And when we actually exited both of them, there was no finds in them. One had um, some pottery, sorry, some bits of very degraded bone. So we're actually wondering if maybe they are actually um, kists. 
Uh, but we do know there, uh, there was burials probably in the vicinity because in one of the other pits we found uh, the remains of a Bronze Age beaker vessel. So in the bottom, the, the picture at the bottom there, you can see a wee pit with a stone in it. And again, that was under another pit alignment I actually found in the southwest of the site, and that had cut marked stones on it. And interestingly, so when we first began to dig it, you couldn't actually see the cut marked stones until the sun was at a certain angle and you got the shadow on it. That's why there's shadow in the photo, we couldn't actually get rid of it. So again, this is another photo of more pits, and you can see some of the enclosures a bit more close up. And the one at the bottom there, you can see a wee group of pits, and in that pit, the group pit, ugh, the pit, the group of pits, we found um, spindle whorls, pottery, and also stone tools. And again, you can see one of the enclosures in the background. So this is just an example of some of the finds that we actually had on site. Um, those two pits at the top, the one that's been fully excavated actually contained a polished stone axe, and that's the one at the bottom there. And it was right at the base of it, so we're obviously thinking, is this some sort of special deposition? A lot of times with pits, they can be quite difficult to interpret, and people often look upon them as being um, rubbish pits, and I'm more than sure they are, but they can also be places of deposition for special objects. And some of the other photos, some really lovely pottery at the bottom, which I haven't seen before, the kind of scratch marks on it, and that's a uh, sponge of whirl at the top. So, a wee quick word about the enclosures. There was about 19 on site, and I'm calling them enclosures, but there were some roundhouses, and I'm sure they had quite a lot of different functions. The photo on his left is it's just some of the team actually digging one of the enclosures, internal area. Another one on the right, you can just see, it's just sort of an aerial photo of some enclosures interspersed with pit groups. And this is all in the sort of middle band of the site. So one of the largest was a palisade enclosure, and it was about 29 metres in length. It had a really, really wide open end to the west, but it, in the actual gully of it, it had um, stones, and they were probably used to um, support panels or post holes. We don't really know what it was used for. There wasn't really anything in the middle. There was quite a lot of pits cutting it, but I think they were probably different time. Again, it, it could even just have been for animals, but they'd obviously have, have to have closed the, sorry, the eastern end off in some way. And these are just another three of the type of enclosures we found down site. And you can see they're quite varied. The top one was the very first one we actually excavated on site. And it was actually really interesting. Um, in the middle, it had quite a lot of layers of occupation that contained pottery. And when we began to remove them, we found um, quite a lot of pits and post holes. So we're assuming they obviously supported structures like posts, maybe for a roof. But actually, near the opening, which was to the southwest, we found two pits. And in between these two pits was actually a crouched inhumation. There actually wasn't a lot left of it, to be honest, and I don't, it's not actually on the photo there. But so it's quite interesting to see how the actual building will actually, how it actually really, you know, how it relates to the actual inhumation, how they're actually associated. And again, the one down the bottom there was actually in, in kind of the more the wet area. And it was just to show you how different they were. There's quite a few that had no entranceway. They were just essentially little kind of oval circles. Um, often with no features at all. So obviously they've got a different purpose. And again, the one at the top was actually quite a surprise. It was a double ring ditch. And it was about seven metres in diameter, and it was actually on top of the ditches. So it's actually truncated the ditches after they'd filled in, which is quite a surprise, actually. So this is another example of some pits, sorry, some enclosures. And these two, we're presuming, are more likely around houses. Um, they've got quite a lot of pits um, and posts, presumably to, to again hold um, posts and panels. And they also had quite a lot of kind of more domestic finds, like pottery. There was also um, shell, and there was um, kind of occupation surface. But on the sort of part of the survey, you can see there, if you see on the left, there's also kind of really quite long um, linear features, and they're actually field boundaries. And in some I think that's really quite interesting, how these field boundaries actually relate to the rest of the settlement. And I actually think that's quite, quite interesting. So down the southwest of the site, it was actually really quite different compared to the rest, because most of the features there were post holes. And this is a really big timber post enclosure. It measured about 
Oh, 27 by 24 metres. And the entranceway was around about the southwest, sorry, southeast. I've got a problem with west and east, and north and south as well, to be honest. And um, going by the photo, you'd think there was a lot of, um, there's quite a lot of posters in the central area, but there actually wasn't really. There was other features, like there was another roundhouse, another um, rectangle enclosure that actually cut, you know, this big timber enclosure. Unfortunately, there wasn't any fines, but it was absolutely fantastic. It was really wonderful to dig. And this one was nearby, and you can see by the survey result, you can see the big timber enclosure in the purple. And if you see up to the northeast, there's a, well, we were wondering if it's actually a Neolithic timber hall. Um, it was 24 by 10 metres in size, and it had the rounded ends like most Neolithic timber halls have. Unfortunately, there was no evidence of dating at all. And that was, that was one of the things, the hallmark of that area down the bottom in the southwest. There wasn't really any, any finds, actually. Most were in the elsewhere on site. Um, but that's, again, it'll be quite interesting. Hopefully, when post-excavation starts, hopefully we'll actually get some material that we can actually radiocarbon date. The bottom there is, to the right, is another wee roundhouse that we found in that area too. So we also had stone structures on site, and most of them were actually in the overburden, which is, could be 600 to a metre in depth. Um, but this one wasn't, it was actually cut into the natural. And it actually presented as a sort of curve, like a crescent-shaped um, dark area in the ground, you can see from the top. And in the north, there was actually a curved line of stones. So when we actually excavated it, and that's just two, so Eddie and Eva's down there excavating. Oh, sorry, I've got it on the left. I changed my photos last night, you see, so I thought it was another slide. You can see there's actually a revetment wall. It survives better on the on one of the sides. But actually, it tended to level out the feature as it kind of went more to the south, and that was actually the slope of the ground. But underneath was a lot of pits, and we actually found um, fragments of metalwork and waste, like crucible, and we also found fragments of shield bracelet as well. So we're thinking that that structure is not any later than the Iron Age. So we also had stone structures on site, but most of these were in the overburden. And when we were actually opening up the site and stripping, any time we ever came across stone, we always stopped because there wasn't, any na there wasn't any stones in the natural. It was very sandy. So we're presuming that a lot of the stone was brought into the site. So you can see it's all, it's very, it survives really to the northeast and the southwest. The other two sides are missing and we don't have the entrance either. But it's basically, it's got really broad walls, about one and a half metres thick. And in the central area, there was quite a lot of occupation deposits and we also think a cobble surface as well. And again, we found quite a lot of pottery in the middle of it. It measured about 17 metres and internally it's about 6 metres. Um, again, it's obviously been kind of played about with quite a bit. There's other walls and we've got post holes in the middle and you can see that it's obviously been, um, there's obviously different phases of building there. So we also had six kilns on site as well. Two of them were lime kilns, the one wasn't excavated because it was out with the development area. Um, the other one, um, you see it had been excavated there. It was actually quite high up in the overburden. But I've put a picture on the right to show you it fully excavated. And if you see that little metal thing on the kind of left side, that's actually a metal bucket, which is like in the 19th, 20th century, so it's really quite modern. We also had um, another two kilns on site. One was a corn drying kiln. It was absolutely full of burnt seeds. And in the bottom, there's another kiln. And again, it had a middle bowl and it had like double, a, a flue at either end. Um, both of these actually had medieval pottery in them. So we're presuming they're from the medieval period. And this is the last two of the kilns were actually sitting above the four ditches, obviously when the ditches had obviously filled in. And if you see in the top photo, you can see the overburden. That's actually what they were in. Now, the lower one didn't really survive very well. It was mainly kind of remnants of the flue. And at the end, you had the, the bowl. It's really, really bright orange burnt sand. But this is actually the upper one. And again, we think it's the flue, sorry, the bowls in the middle with a flue at either end. Again, we didn't really get anything to date these. Like, like pottery, there was quite a bit of bone kicking around the area as we were excavating. But hopefully, once uh, post-excavation starts, there was actually 
charcoal and burnt material actually in the flue, so hopefully we'll be able to use them. By the way, John, the wee surveyor's also at the top, you can see it's sitting on top of the ditches. So the last thing is the ditches. So that's one of them uh, pre-excavation, and you can see the four of them on the survey results at the top. And what you can see is that the outer one, now the aerial photograph did um, actually stop, and you can actually see that when we actually began to excavate it, it did actually terminate there. So that's the mall, the four ditches excavated, and we had to e excavate 50% of them. And unfortunately, despite all that digging, there was virtually no finds. The outer one had maybe four or five bits of pottery um, and, the, and in the upper levels of its fill. In the others, there wasn't really anything. They were really quite sterile. They had the odd bit of flint and the odd bit of really degraded tiny bit of bone, but that was it. But where I'm actually standing in the middle is where the ring ditch was and where I actually truncated these two big ditches in the middle. I've just put this photo up to show you how the ditches varied. The outer one was a lot smaller, it wasn't as wide, it was only about two metres wide and about 80 to about a metre deep. And the inner ones were about, two, about three to four metres wide and they were about 170 to nearly two metres in depth. And they're more V-shaped and a lot deeper. And that's just a photo of some of the team digging the ditches. And that's one of them, one of the internal ones excavated. Now, when we were actually digging, there was a little dog leg corner at the top that we still had to do. And when we opened that up, we found quite a lot of um, stones. We found kind of uh, paving stones that looked like some sort of um, surface. And we also found kind of rubbly walls. And, but it was quite slumped and quite sunken. So when we began to remove the stones that you can see in the top, there we found another ditch. So there's actually five ditches in this fort. And that's at the bottom, um, this section through it. So that's a photo of the five ditches from the fort, but we never actually dug anything at all of the fort internally, it was only the ditches. And this is just some of the finds from the site. Um, most of them are from pits actually. So we've had some loom weights and possible fishing weights. We had quite a few fragments of saddle quern. That one there was actually reused in one of the overburdened rubbly walls. The pivot stone at the top was actually found alongside where that um, rotary quern stone is, and that was actually above um, the, the final fifth inner stone in our ditch and the stonework there. And again, this is some pottery as well. We've got the Bronze Age beaker that I mentioned earlier on, down on the left side, and we have some Neolithic groove where the pot at the top, I don't really know the date, but it does have lugs on it for hanging, and that's two fragments of shield bracelet, which are found in different pits. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this, because I don't actually know what it is. And it was found in a few pits, but it was in, in, in a little pit group. There was these two pits, and it was absolutely full of this stuff, basically. At first it looked like um, clay, but when you actually dig it, it's sand, and it's got a sort of grey, greasy texture over it. So I just put this up just to actually ask folk if they actually knew what it was because we don't, we have sampled it, so hopefully it will be tested at one point, and that's a wee close-up of it. So, so really what we've uncovered is the remains of a complex and multi-phase settlement, and hopefully the analysis of these remains will help us to reconstruct the use of the site in the past. And that's just some photos of the team with the camera pulling photos of themselves. Okay, okay thank you very much.